In this episode, we're getting wired and then cooling off. Let's go. In our last episode, we plumbed the oil, fuel, and water systems that will keep Firebolt running strong. This time, we're starting on our big wiring job and keeping that turbocharged tornado frosty with an intercooler and methanol injection kit. Let's get to work. A few episodes ago, I introduced you to the brains behind Project Firebolt, Holly's game-changing Terminator X powertrain management system. The horsepower heads over at Holly have really outdone themselves with this one. In case you don't already know, you're looking at plug-and-play standalone engine control for your LS engine that starts at a thousand bucks. Unreal. I chose the Terminator X Max, which adds powerful transmission control and GM drive-by wire control to the mix. I tell you, I really lucked out on the timing of this. My original plan was to find and strip down a junkyard harness and then track down a GM ECU, but that wouldn't have even gotten me started. I'd still need some complicated tuning software to make all of that work, and I still wouldn't have an in-car touchscreen interface, wideband oxygen sensor, boost gauge, or any of the other awesome features that Holly EFI offers. Holly announced their Terminator X system right as I was about to start on that whole junkyard mess that I just described, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am that such a simple, powerful, and affordable system like this exists for LS enthusiasts. Be sure to check out holly.com for the full Terminator X product line, features, how-to info, and more. Okay, let's get started on the install. This kit comes with an excellent manual that I'd read over a few times to get familiar with the pieces and parts and the overall installation process. I started by laying everything out, including the other systems that we'll need to wire, like the fuel pump and cooling fan. The Terminator X system will trigger and control them, but you need to make sure you have a good wiring setup with a dedicated relay for each. I'm also adding a couple of optional features, like Holly's 3-bar map sensor, which you'll only need if you're running a turbo or supercharger. NA guys can use the Terminator X's built-in map sensor. Finally, I picked up these tack and speedometer conversion boxes to make our Toyota stock gauges work, but after reading up on the Terminator X documentation, I may not need these at all. We'll see how that goes. All right, now I'm going to harvest anything I need out of this stock Toyota engine harness. Mainly like this firewall grommet, I definitely want that. Uh, probably a variety of other little clips and things that mount the engine bay. There are a couple wires we need in here, so let's get to doing that. Oh, and I've also been studying this Toyota wiring manual as I wanted to get familiar with the location and colors of some of the wires I need to tap into, like the speedometer, tack, coolant gauge on the dash, and alternator wiring. Big shout out to Toyota for color coding these wiring diagrams. Thank you so much. This is just fantastic. Okay, back to breaking down that stock harness. With that job done, I began laying out the main Terminator X engine harness to get a feel for where everything would go. This is very straightforward as Holly's kits are designed to plug right into your LS engine's various sensors and components. Oh, and everything is labeled too, making it that much easier. I then did the same with the transmission harness, which also plugged right in. After getting all those plugged up, I started routing the trigger wires for my cooling fan and fuel pump, which I'm going to run over to the driver's side headlight area near the battery. All right, everybody, quick wiring update. So this is the first day I've tackled it. Made awesome progress today. I mean, literally started from zero wiring and now have the harness all laid out most of the plugs plugged in. What I spent most of my time on was just reading the manual, understanding all the different inputs, outputs, where everything should go. Uh, some of the custom things I did in the Tacoma's engine bay, like the fuel pressure regulator and the remote oil pressure sending unit. At the same time, I'm working on the stock Toyota wiring, like the starters in a different location. So we got to extend those starter wires. We also have additional things that need to be wired. 
a new fuel pump relay. We need to do a cooling fan relay, a fan relay for the little transmission cooler fan, uh, the methanol injection system. So basically I was just looking at the whole Terminator X Max system, seeing what all it needs, and then also thinking about these other jobs to be done and the placement of all these wires and where everything should go. It's a big job, but honestly, just like anything, if you just break it down into small chunks, it's not too bad. Okay, so that's an update on day one of wiring. I'll give you an update the next time I'm in here working on it. Okay, too much wiring makes me grumpy, so let's change gears a bit and focus on cooling off Project Firebolt. Feeding your engine hot boost is just rude, so to cool the charge down, I picked up this intercooler from Treadstone. It's got a 12.5 by 22 by 3.5 inch core size, 3 inch inlets and outlets, and features a divided inlet to even out airflow across the high efficiency bar and plate core. I used a Treadstone intercooler on my old Gallant VR4, and it performed great, so I'm sure this one will too. Alright, let's bolt this beast on. Good. No. <laughs> All right, it's gonna work. So I've got plenty of room in here for this three and a half inch wide core. What I'm up against is this hood latch support. It sticks out a little bit, kind of bows out. Yeah, we're gonna have to do something with this that may or may not involve cutting. And I had this thing in here all nice. Come on, buddy. There we go. Okay, let's try this without that pesky hood latch in place. Better. <laughs> Still a bit of, oh, 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 a little trimming and this thing's going straight. In. Next, I did a little measuring to determine a good bolt length for these mounting bosses. Thank you again to my old stash of random Mitsubishi bolts for always being there when I need them. All right, here's my mock-up setup. I've got my welding table down here, got the intercooler sitting on it, so I can just sort of raise and lower it and figure out exactly where this thing could go. To get the core exactly where I want it, I'm using my old FD RX7 aluminum scissor jack, which I use way more than I ever thought I would when I found it in a junkyard back in 1997. Okay, here's our hood latch and our hood latch support. And we go down, 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 down. Look at that. In my miscellaneous hardware stuff, I found a little tiny flat headed Allen six millimeter that goes right in there. Then I flattened the bracket out a little bit. Boom, we're clearing. Make the noise. Alright, I like that. Hey, look at that! Hanging under its own power. Got the brackets all mocked up. Here's the driver's side. All we need to do now is clean these up a bit, round off the edges, 
smooth them out, and then bolt them up, and then weld them right here to these supports. There we go, one huge intercooler mounted up and ready for action, all without cutting into the steel crash bar or any other factory Tacoma bits. Nice. At this point I was really flying, so let's jump ahead. I was tired of seeing the front end of the truck all tore down like this, so I decided to reinstall the bumper cover, headlights, and grill. There we go, it's looking like a truck again. Okay, our next order of business is the cold side intercooler piping. So I've got a 3.75 to three inch reducer here. So what I hope to do is fab up a 90 degree bend here that goes down that way to the intercooler. I'm gonna use steel on this piping because I can easily weld flanges and bungs and things to it. But someday, uh, I'd like to learn how to TIG weld aluminum and come back and build this piping in lighter weight aluminum. But for now, steel will be good. Just to give you an idea of the room we're working with here, I take my bend. There you go, there's the room we've got. Looks pretty good. This is going a little further into the throttle body than I'd like. So I'll have to cut that a little shorter, but this looks very promising. For our silicone couplers and bends, I'm using these and a variety of others that I picked up at summitracing.com. For the cold side piping, I'm using Summit's constant tension hose clamps to keep our pipes in place. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little surgery to this coupling here to shorten it. It's just too long right now and won't allow our pipe in there. So, to cut one of these nicely, you can use a clamp like this, and then a brand new blade, cut right through there, just take your time and go slow, and you'll end up with a nice, straight, clean cut. Okay, we're roughing this out. Now you can start to see how that's gonna go. Down here at the intercooler, you can see we've just got a straight three inch coupling. It's gonna come around and then straight up to our pipe we just made. For my mandrel bends, I'm using a few different pieces from Summit, including this three inch tight radius U bend and this 45. Okay, let's get to cutting. Next, it was time to locate a good spot for our methanol injection nozzle and air temperature sensor. With those drilled out, now we can tap the hole for the injection nozzle and then weld the air temp sensor bung in place. Okay, let's keep building. After a few rounds of welding and test fitting, the final step was to install a blow-off valve flange.
So here's our upper intercooler pipe, painted and ready to go in. There we go, the intercooler pipe is all cinched down. Let's check out that blow-off valve. Okay, here's the blow-off valve we're gonna use. This is another Tom's Turbo Garage classic. I've had this one for over 15 years. Been on so many different cars, mostly DSMs over the years. I think it was on the Grand National even for a period of time, but now it's going on Firebolt. Okay, there's our new home for yield tile blow-off valve. I like that spot right there. Tucked away. Nice. Okay, here's me modeling our giant charge pipe that runs from the turbo up to the intercooler. I didn't document this process because it was actually a very simple design, as you can see, pretty much just a long straight pipe. I made it in two and a half inch pipe and it connects at the intercooler with a summit two and a half inch U-bend that connects to a three inch transition coupler. Part of the fun of sharing my car hobby with you guys here on YouTube is the support, motivation, tips, stories, and roasts <laughs> that you all share in the comments. If there's one thing that wrenching on cars has taught me is that I have lots to learn. A few episodes ago, you saw me fab up the exhaust system that would feed our turbo. Well, a bunch of you advised me to watch out for those flex couplings unraveling and ending up in my turbine inlet. I did a little research and yep, it's a thing that can happen under some circumstances and I definitely don't want any of that. Even though I used high quality flex sections, you guys know your stuff and I didn't want to chance that happening, so out came those flex sections which were replaced by these Summit Racing exhaust bellows which allow for good flexibility without the chance for wire mesh unraveling or blowing out. While I was in there, I decided to add this interlocking 3 inch V-band to make removing the front half of the exhaust a little easier in the future. So thank you for the heads up on that, everyone. I really appreciate y'all looking out for me. Okay, let's get to it. Got our new flex section in without the meshy weirdness that could potentially cause trouble down the road. That'll work. If you've seen my old videos, you know I'm a huge fan of alcohol and methanol injection. I've been running it on my turbo cars for almost 20 years with excellent results. Back in the day, your only option was to piece it together on your own, which was fun, but times have changed and you can now get an excellent system all in one box. So to handle the important job of getting the most performance out of our pump gas, I picked up this AEM V2 water methanol injection system. This all-in-one kit includes this sturdy tank with a built-in low fluid sensor, an internally bypassed heavy-duty injection pump, 20 feet of tubing, a machined billet aluminum injector with integral check valve, three interchangeable injector nozzles to cover a variety of power levels, an LED light indicator for your dash, and all the wiring and hardware needed to install it. But the key ingredient is AEM's progressive controller. This simple and compact unit has a built-in map sensor, so all you have to do is run a boost reference line to it, and then adjust the boost level that you want the system to start operating at with the knob on the left, and when you want it to reach full blast with the knob on the right. There's also a button for testing the system and a diagnostic LED to let you know if you're low on fluid or if any other issues arise. Okay, let's install this. AEM includes excellent instructions and they've made the installation as easy and straightforward as possible. That said, the first step is to install the tank and the only spot that I could find that would fit AEM's positioning requirements was the stock washer fluid jug location. Now it seemed crazy to take out one perfectly fitting tank to replace it with another, so I pulled an audible and am adapting the stock Toyota washer fluid jug as our water and alcohol reservoir. The next step is to find a home for the pump that is below the tank's lowest water level, so I found a good spot up behind the bumper and made a bracket to mount it.
There we go, let's bolt it up. Okay, progress update on the alcohol injection system. Got the pump mounted in there, nice and cozy. We got the line running from the tank. Comes out of here and spirals down into the pump's inlet, right there. I've spliced in a old Mitsubishi harness I had, so I can unplug this and take that whole unit out if I ever needed to, to service it or whatever. I still have work to do to come back and tidy all this up and put some looms on things, so more work to be done here. Our next job here is to go to the pump's outlet and run a line all the way up to our throttle body to the injector. Let's do it. Now we can locate a good spot for the injector nozzle following the instructions in the manual and then drill and tap that, which you saw me do moments ago. Speaking of the nozzle, I'm going to start with the medium size and we can size up or down after looking at our data logs later on. Next, I flushed out any debris from the fluid lines to prevent clogging and then tested out the spray through the injector. With all that looking good, the nozzle assembly is threaded into the throttle elbow. With that in place, I ran the line from the pump up to our nozzle. I used a sharp utility blade to get a nice clean cut and then pushed the hose into the locking connector. My final step is to whip up my 50-50 mix of denatured alcohol and distilled water that will be sprayed into our 5-3 under boost. I don't know if it's just this Tacoma or all Toyotas, but this thing has a gigantic washer fluid tank. Perfect. Our next job is to install this Moroso air oil separator. I run one of these on Project Thunderbolt and have been really happy with it over the years. Moroso offers a bunch of vehicle specific versions, but here I'm using their universal kit. In case you don't know, these air oil separators capture excess oil and keep it out of your intake tract. This allows your engine to breathe cleaner intake air, reducing deposits and carbon buildup inside your engine. The quality of this part and its components are excellent, and I like how fast and easy it is to drain too. Okay, let's install it. First, I screwed in the inlet and outlet fittings, followed by the drain valve and tube. Next, I found a good home for it that was fairly close to the ports on the engine that we'll be tapping into. And then I made a simple bracket that attaches to the bracket included in the kit. Routing the vacuum lines for a setup like this can be a little tricky on a turbocharged engine, so I used a method that I found on the Sloppy Mechanics forum that has worked for many Turbo LS owners. With that bolted down, I routed the lines and boom, we're done. Thank you for watching and thank you to Summit Racing for making this video series possible. They are the LS Swap experts and offer everything you need to build the car or truck of your dreams. Be sure to visit summitracing.com, grab a catalog or download their handy app for all of your horsepower needs. Also, don't forget to come hang out with me in any of these spots, I'd love to hear from you. In the next episode, it's time to wire, fill and fire. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.